let's give that another go. Live has ended. We'll leave that up because it mentions about Puba. Let's cancel that. Let's see. All right. There we go. Yes. Uh, I've lost us live. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Oh, I need to keep the sound on there. Okay, how are we doing, everybody? So, how are you getting on? Are you managed to to share it on Facebook? Yes, I'm pretty sure I did. So we're gonna go for it. You on Instagram. Hang on, I can't hear you. Mm, that's because I muted myself on Instagram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh goodness. Me. Okay. Okay. So mute me on Instagram because now there's echo. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everyone right we're here oh my life we're doing the best that we can people we are human after all mm -hmm. okay lovely so before we get started with this evening's energy insights I explained in the previous video what's been going on I'm going to hand over to Pam so I'm going to mute myself in a minute Pam's going to explain to you the um uh animal totem workshop that we're hosting next Thursday um people are commenting on Instagram I'm here with Bella in Florida beautiful lovely to see you okay I'm going to mute um and Pam if you can share with everybody what the workshop is about before we get started with the insights okay awesome can you hear me okay I think you can okay so we are so excited because Julianne and I have put together a really cool workshop called animal totems and spirit guides and Basically, here's the premise. Do you find yourself drawn to certain animals or do you often see animals in certain places? Maybe they're unusual places. I mean, you need to mute your computer. Okay, we'll try that. <laughs> okay, so back to what we were saying. Sorry about that. So if you have ever wondered you know, maybe why you're seeing all these animals, maybe unusual animals, things totally out of the norm, or if you're seeing things repetitively, repetitively show up over and over again, that is usually a message. There's a message there for you from a guide. Um, and animals, as we know, are very, very powerful. They are very spiritual. And so we have developed this really cool workshop to help you take your spiritual development to a new level. Um, it is designed to help you identify and connect with your animal totems and your spirit animals in order for them to be able to give you messages and guidance and support or direction in your life. So things that you will learn in the workshop is you will learn the difference between an animal totem and a spirit guide. We're going to do a grounding meditation to kind of get everything to get you centered. Um, we're going to participate in a guided meditation in order for you to connect with your guides and you'll learn ways to deepen that connection. And then Julian and I are going to share actual examples from our own totems and our own guides. And it's pretty, pretty amazing how that works. Um, and the stories we have to share is pretty cool. And we're also going to draw an animal card for you to provide some guidance in this new area of spirituality. And um, obviously we'll be giving you other resources so that you can continue to learn and study on your own. So it is going to be next Thursday at 1.30 Central, 7.30 UK time, which is like just like today, except a week from today. Um, I cannot believe it's already like that time. <laughs> it's, so it's from 1 30 to 3 or from 7 30 to 9. And we will be doing a Zoom. So you can go to either one of our workshops and sign up. Website. Um, and maybe Julianne can drop links for the signups into the chat so that you guys can go do this. But it's it's uh it's very inexpensive. So it's like 
$30 US, 25 UK. So it's about the same price. And uh, yeah, let's, let's just go have a really great time learning and meeting your spirit, your animal totems and your spirit guides. It, it's truly fascinating. And we think that you'll really enjoy it. So that is my public service announcement for today. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much, my love. You're absolutely right. So um, I am just popping the link into Facebook. Whoa, that's not what I want to do. I almost posted uh, the stuff in my notes. So yes, if you head to either of our websites, you will find the links for both. So we've both got people in our communities that are in the UK and the US, and we wanted to make it comparable depending on which currency you use. So um, if you get it from mine, you'll pay it in uh, GBP. And if you get it from PAMS, you'll pay in USD. But with the exchange rate, it works at about the same 25, um, 25 pounds, 30 dollars. And, and as Pam said, we have got some brilliant examples that are just mind blowing. And I sent Pam a picture. I created the graphics the other day and I sent Pam a picture and said, you'll never guess who's come to visit me. And I had a pheasant in my garden. And when you look up the meaning of a spirit guide as a pheasant, oh my gosh, I was blown away. And and, I, and Pam just sent me this face, like a real shocked emoji, like how spot on is that? I'm like, I know. <laughs> so we've got some brilliant examples. And like Pam said, it's gonna be a wonderful workshop. It's going to be a really safe space as well. So if you are completely new to this area, please don't worry. It is something that you can get a feel for. You can kind of dip your toe in. You know, you don't have to be experienced in this realm. It is really for that's why we're offering it to give you an introduction to it. So head to the websites. Um, I think we've both got it in the link in our bio and Instagram as well. If you want to find the links to sign up that way. OK. OK, so. Uh, let's get started with the first, the first um, uh, client, I was going to say, the first um, energy insight, first sensing. So Pam, you happy for me to go first? Yeah, okay, lovely. Right. So I was going to have, who have we got? Who have we got? We have got uh, Merlin, Serafina and Bagheera. So it is Phoebe here um phoebe was catching us on where have i got phoebe facebook let me find my facebook window phoebe if you're here phoebe yes here fabulous great okay let me share my screen Gira, Phoebe. <laughs> okay. Oh, it says it's loading. Oh, I've got some new. So hopefully you should be able to see Merlin with his tem with his um doing a blep. Can you see him? Yeah, good. Cool. Okay. Trying to find. Right. <laughs> okay, so let me see what Phoebe said about Merlin. Um, so Merlin has been having bouts of uh, lethargy, lethargy, however you say it, uh, sickness, diarrhea, and refusing to eat. He then goes food crazy and, and pursues relentlessly. He stopped going out, sleeps less, and is unable to relax. This has happened on and off for 18 weeks. He's seen the vets, had multiple tests, but no answers. Okay. I have to say, there are echoes in that of what Max is going through at the moment. So, Phoebe, I know it's really hard when you are dealing with this, you know, our fur babies, companions, whatever we call them, you know, it's hard when they are essentially hurting and not very well. So, let's see what he's got to share with you. So, just give me a second, everyone, while I um, ground and center and drop into my heart space, and I'll see what he's got to say. Oh, that's better. Okay. Okay. 
feels really unsettled. Feels really sh like really shook up. Oh, his energy feels like really tingly, like it's just all a bit, it's a little wonky. <laughs> I don't really know how else to explain it. <laughs> um, oh, I've never really experienced this before. <clears throat> Something has, has, has happened that has expressed all of his chakras so his aura feels like it's like it's like this and I, and I don't know whether that's energy or or emotion but his all of his chakras are affected by his aura now something has happened that has almost like shifted the vibration of his norm of his aura of his auric norm I don't know if this is going to make sense it's not really making sense to me so Every color has a frequency. Every person has a vibration. Every being has their own frequency and vibration. So if you think about, if you were tuning a radio, you tune it to say 97.5 FM to find radio one, right? So for Merlin, let's say his normal frequency is say like 45 for want of a better example. And at the moment it feels like it's like 90. So something has happened that has shifted his Whoa, frequency and vibrate all I can feel is like tingles all over my body so so something has happened to disrupt his energy so I don't know if you've moved house it doesn't feel quite right it feels like he's met someone or he's been introduced to someone or he's interacted with someone and it's been a shock. Now, whether that's someone coming into the home or an outside cat, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if he's indoor or outdoor in the comments. Moved house in July. Mm, interesting. It's, it's sooner. It's, it's, it's after that. It's something about meeting someone. It's it's he's had a soul like displacement, a, 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 a soul recognition with someone, and it's displaced his energy. That's how it feels. Hands nodding. That's good. <laughs> um, and and he's and he's not he's not settled from it. He's not like grounded himself or. Or, or found his like 45 degree frequency again he's not like come down almost from it which is why one minute he's fine the next minute he's not and then he's this and then that and oh huh, Pam's identity interesting you know what, that, that is a realm I have not kind of entered into yet but I'm glad that you said that because it is something it it feels just really unsettling um so let's think. So let's think about how we can help. Okay. Oh, I just, I all the hairs on all of my body are sticking up. This is the weirdest feeling I have ever had. I have to say, Phoebe, like this is the most bizarre thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> They've got a little black farm cat called Casper that comes and visits. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's not that. No, Pam shaking her head. No, it's not that. I'm going to pass over to Pam in a minute because she's got experience of this with her own cats. Um, she might be able to give you some more information, but let me just see what I can do. Let me just see <laughs> what I can do, what he needs to, to ground and center because basically like his, his frequency is just like, Bruh. Oh, um, okay. But, but come on. Just put my finger on his third eye on my screen and it feels like everything's kind of calmed a little. So it's something to do with with the third eye, like being like a spirit connection, it, a pamphlet entity. It, so I've just 
just closing his chakra a little bit. Right, Phoebe, I would, so there is something about the dark blue, funny enough, the, the colour that I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see on Instagram, like a navy blue colour for his third eye, the darker blue will help to, to bring the energy down a bit. And it will start with his third eye. Yeah. I would also, I don't know um, if you can have cuddles and physical touch with him. I would also think about when you are with him, if you can get near him, if you can touch him, about you stroking it as well to, to, and having the intention of closing it or reducing it I would say the the size the shape the connection okay and I can't stop doing it for myself at the minute because that's what he needs <laughs> so have the intention of bringing his energy back to himself and I would use the mantra your energy is your own I'm going to put that in the chat because you need to start saying that to him using that with him I would think about putting that, you know, writing it in paper on, on a bit of paper and putting it under a cat bed, like where he sleeps. And it will help to ground him to bring his energy back. So this isn't about like rainbow fabric or, or red fabric. It, he needs blue to support the third eye and he needs those words. He needs to know that he is able to release, disconnect from this unsettledness and bring his energy back so bring his frequency back so I would always advocate a chakra cleanse as well because like you know after having something like this for him experiencing something like this they're all going to be a bit out of alignment anyway so I would seriously think about you know having a chakra cleanse so that he's got basically almost like a factory re reset of um, energy and you can bring the chakras to where they need to be for him to bring him back down to that kind of like 45 degree frequency if that makes sense I don't know if that makes if this makes any form of sense Pam I'm going to hand over to you in case there's anything else you want to add yeah baby just you have to in recent year moments because this is resonating with touch not a person and it's not malevolent or anything and it's it's sense I'm sensing it's a family it was a family member who was back visiting and I can tell you from what I see with my own cats <laughs> what that person's cats and spirit does it they really get freaked out um because the energies were like zipping around like shooting stars all over the place and it can be overwhelming and it can just make them like you know because there's energy that they don't understand and they don't understand where it's coming from and they 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 don't know how to get away from it um so yeah i would just figure out if you can identify who the pet and spirit might be and then figure out what it is they're here to tell you because they are when they come they have a message for you maybe it's to support you in some way um but they're here for not to torment the cat but the cat is the messenger <laughs> the cat is the canary in the coal mine so to speak to let you know that uh, there's a visitor and you, there's something you need to do so that's my input on that Lovely. Thank you, Pam. I agree with you. It's not human, it's animal. There, and, and there is, yeah, I totally agree. I think that's a, that's a great recommendation. Um, so, uh, Phoebe, I hope that's been helpful and useful. I think you might need to do a little bit more with him. So we've made a couple of suggestions about how to support him with getting him back on track. But if you have got a visitor there, you may need to consider an animal communication with this uh, other uh, animal to find out, as Pam said, what the message is. And, you know, if you don't want to go down that route, 
you can tune into this yourself, everyone. You know, you can do a bit of free writing, have their picture, start writing to them. You know, it will change at some point to you writing from them. Just let it come, you know, sit, be open and see what comes through as you're writing if you don't want to get another professional involved. So there's always a way for you to do it yourself as well. All right, I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to just take myself off camera on Facebook for a second. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Pam while she does the first method testing. Okay. All right, so let me share my screen and we're going to go to, hang on one second, I'm going to pull up the first kitty, who is Bella, um, hold on one second guys, close this, so here we go, this one. So I'm going to share. Okay. So I let me know, Julianne, can you see Bella? Okay. All right. So let's see. Keo, Keo, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, I know you're here. You're watching on Instagram or Facebook, one of them. Okay. So here's what she says about Bella. She says, um, look at that sweet face. She says, skin allergy question mark. Is she going back five years? So Bella, who is now eight, came to me as a one-year-old, not well cared for. Um, she said he had been, she had been bitten by a rodent and had treated for a mouth ulcer. I've never heard of of a cat being bitten by a rodent to have a mouse, a, a rodent ulcer, but I do know what rodent ulcers are. Um, she started out on raw food and then she gradually transitioned away from raw. She's been treated with oral steroids four times. When her face and now body get red sores that itch and turn to scabs, which she scratches open again. Um, I have been given hills, sensitive skin and digestion, dry kibble to her for a food trial. We hate that she is only eating dry food and only one kind. I think I need to transition her back to raw. We see the vet on Wednesday, the 17th. Our doctor is a feline dermatologist and she hasn't been able to really help Bella. I would really like to figure out what she is truly allergic to food wise, if anything. We don't give either cat fish. We just started a subscription to Smalls uh, and it comes frozen. Yes, uh, familiar with Smalls. She says, both cats love it. Bella does not receive vaccinations or shots of any kind anymore, but we use revolution, tick and flea and heartworm meds on her and her foster brother. She has a good relationship with all of us, loves to be brushed, plays well, poops and pees fine. She's generally good natured and sweet. And we think she deserves to be healed once and for all. So precious Bella here, she got some, she got some stuff going on. Um, First of all, based on the dis the description here, what I'm seeing, I, I'm hearing immune immune confusion, immune confusion, uh, big time. So I know you said you don't give them vaccinations uh, anymore, but I'm betting you probably did it one time, um, based on the way that was worded. So let us know if that is not the case. Um, so I'm going to just go in. First of all, if you're not used to muscle testing or not familiar with muscle testing, muscle testing taps into the wisdom of the body via the nervous system. And I can ask yes, no questions. I use a pendulum, which has given me my yes and no answers, uh, depending on which way it goes. For me, my yeses are clockwise and my nos are counterclockwise. And so basically, I'm just going to try to figure out what is the underlying stressor, where's the imbalance in the body. And just by use, I can do this with a pendulum. I can ask questions and get yes, no answers. So based on what we have here, I'm going to start by asking, um, are these ulcers virus related? I'm getting a no. Okay. So is this an immune confusion situation? I'm getting a yes. Um, are there uh, any vaccines that resonate for her at this time? I'm getting a yes. That doesn't surprise me. Um, I kind of expected that. Um, FVRCP vaccine, rabies vaccine, rabies vaccine. Okay, so she probably had at least one in her lifetime. And so right off the bat, we need to detox this vaccine. And that would be huge in helping the immune system start to rebalance. But there's more. Um, 
The revolution is a stressor at this time. So yes, the revolution, the heartworm meds are stressors at this time. Yes. Okay. So one of the things that you have to remember is that when we put toxic chemicals, like neurotoxin poisons, because they basically are poisons into the body, you are going to have an immune response because they are toxic and the body is responding to that invader. So it can throw off the immune system. Um, it can cause a lot of sluggishness to the liver. It's a lot of liver stress. If you think about it, um, let's see, does the liver need supported? Yes. That's a very strong. Yes. So when you describe the ulcers, the sores that she's getting, um, that turn red and itch, this is part of the immune confusion and the immune problem. Um, we definitely need liver support, liver detox. We've got to detox the chemicals. We've got to detox the vaccines. A lot of times cats who have the rodent ulcers, it is an overimmune um, response or hyperimmune response. And when we're dealing with heavy metals and toxic chemicals and a vaccine on top of that, you are just loading the body with toxins and it doesn't know what to do with it. So you get the itching, you get the sores, you get the rodent ulcers and things like that. Um, number one, my suggestion would be do some detox work with me. We've, I've got packages that, you know, optimal cat health analysis that will deep dive into all of this and help you step by step detox, vaccine, chemicals, things like that. And then I guess the other thing I would ask is, is there, it looks like she might be indoor. Is she outdoor as well? Is there a reason you're using the heartworm and the, the revolution on her? Um, and I'm not being able to see comments or I'll lose the screen. So I don't know. Um, so she mentioned on Facebook, oh, hold on. Um, she mentioned on Facebook that she's had the baby's vaccine for five years. So is there a homeopathic remedy for that? Um, she's questioned about milk, thistle, and uh, hasn't mentioned about indoor outdoor. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. Okay, rabies, that's that's the reason why her immune system is like wacko. Um, but the chemicals that we're adding on top of that are just making it worse. So yes, I... I am very systematic about how I detox vac vaccines with the liver being as stressed as it is. Um, I'm, there is a lot of stagnation in her body and let's see, do we need to do lymphatic support first? Yes. We've got to open the drainage pathways. So this is why detox is systematic and not just throw in a supplement here, a supplement there. It needs to be done in steps in order for it to be most effective and safe and gentle on the body. Cause we don't want to overload the body with too much at one time. So, um, number one detox, number two, stop doing the environmental, uh, chemical applications because it's not, it's not helping. Um, there are, there are so much more safer ways to address flea and tick if she even has fleas and ticks. If she's indoors and doesn't have any exposure to fleas and ticks, there's no need to give it. Um, same thing for heartworms. I just don't feel like the risk is the risk doesn't outweigh the reward in most cases, unless you are in an infested area and then you would need to take additional, you know, liver support measures while you're doing those things. Um, as far as the food, dry food is very inflammatory. Um, let's see, do you have specific, does she have specific food sensitivities? Yes. And that does contribute to the itching. Um, is it a protein? No. Is it starch? It's the starches in the dry food that she is sensitive to. So I'm not finding proteins per se. So getting her back onto raw would be great. We want to take the starch and the carbs out of her diet because remember cats are carnivores. They are not herbivores. So they need the meat. They need hydration. Um, 
The smalls is is going to be great because it doesn't have all the the starches and things like that in it. Uh, let me think. See so if there's anything else on here. I think that kind of covers it. Um. So yeah, if you are interested in doing some work together, I'd be happy to help you. But this is this needs a systematic approach to getting her body back in balance. So I will turn it back over to Julianne. Lovely. Thanks, Pat. She's um, yeah, you know, hello, my love. Uh, she said that she's gonna get in touch to get a bit of extra help. Just a quick question, um, that you will be able to answer is not the rabies vaccine. Can you just comment on that a second, Pat? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it it's a law in my state too, but I was they also offer an exemption. So you can ask, don't ask your vet, do your own research first because they won't, they really don't want you to know that they're exemptions. <laughs> but if you kick and scream enough, like I did, I I was offered an exemption and I was able to to have that waived. Um if you live in a Nazi state, and I'll just say it like it is because it ticks me off, um, that requires that. <laughs> Don't get me started. It's a soapbox. Um, I would be prepared in advance with specific homeopathics and liver support to detox the minute that vaccine is given. Um, and there are easy ways that we can do that. And I, I have those on my site too uh, for vaccine detox protocols. So we can help. I just say be proactive, have your homeopathic remedies and your liver support and your heavy metal detox ready to go if you are in a Nazi state that requires that. That's my two cents. Lovely. Thank you. I, and I have to say, I am I am very grateful that, you know, in the UK, Obviously, we have options for vaccinations, you know, the boosters and all that kind of stuff. But we don't actually have a situation unless you're going to like, you know, putting them into boarding and things. But in terms of like the rabies, you know, we don't have that. So we are very blessed here. Uh, and thank you for that support. I know that you have a personal experience with a rabies vaccine and the effect it has on your cat. So if anybody needs support with that, Pam is the woman to go to because after her life experience with it she has got a great you know a great way to support your cats with it okay so let's move on how where is the time going okay so um i'm going to be doing let me see is donna here donna was going to be joining us via let me see facebook so donna are you here to talk about Serafina, what a beautiful name. I think that is just lovely. Um, Donna, can you drop a comment and let me know? Because if you're not here, then we won't be doing won't be doing uh Serafina. We do ask for everybody, if you submit your cat for energy insights, to show up and be here with us so that you can answer questions. You know, we can give you a bit more detail and things. So it is important for you to give us um to let us know that you're here and to turn up. Okay, so she's not here just yet. So let's see if we've got uh Natalie with Bagheera. Let me find out where you were joining us from. So Natalie was going to be on Facebook. So, goodness sake, I've got all my screens wonky. Okay, Natalie, let me know if you are here. Are you Can you see Facebook comments, Pam? Last thing I can see is Keo. I was just, yeah, I haven't seen anything from Donna or uh, Natalie of you. Are they here? I haven't seen them. No, not on Instagram either. Oh, she's here on Instagram, Natty Bo33. Yeah, is that her? Yeah, yeah. Okay, lovely. Brilliant. Right, let's get Bagheera up then. Beautiful. Look at this one. <laughs> That's what baby Max is going to look like in a year or two. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Let me find out about Bagheera. So 
Bayira has been has worked with Pam before, so this is uh, I think it's the first second time we've had a bit of a crossover. So it'd be interesting to see how we can help. So Natalie shared that um, he is very sensitive and very quick to pick up on stress or negativity coming from herself or her boyfriend. Unfortunately, this has manifested as chronic vomiting. She's obviously very concerned about the effects this is going to have on him. Currently six years old, turning seven in July. Symptoms began about five years ago. So, you know, he's had this for, for well, I would say, like, you know, 90% of his life by the looks of it. Um, I knew that the quality of food was terrible. So I mixed it with other, oh, sorry. Um, symptoms began five years ago with intermittent regurgitation, went to traditional vet, got Royal Canon Fibre Response Dry Food. Uh, give me a second, everybody. There's so much detail here. It's lovely. Um, okay, bio maze, weight went down, needed to be sedated for blood work. The labs and, and uh, ultrasound didn't give any information. Okay, so a diet overhaul, blood work again, been able to work through the roller coaster of ups and downs lately. It seems bad days are increasing in frequency. She said that Pam has helped absolutely loads. Thank you, Pam, for being a blessing in their life. Picking up on a lot of emotions. Partner is resistant to energy healing. Okay. Most times I'm able to find other outlets for my stress. So that Bagheera does not pick up on things. But unfortunately, this is not the case for the boyfriend. Okay. Okay. Right, Natalie, I am sorry to hear that you have experienced so much with this beautiful boy. Um, so if you're on Instagram, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you can see the pictures of the cats on Facebook. Um, it is heartbreaking when we have a situation, you know, where we know that they're connected to us deeply. Now, what I would say is, you know, if you haven't already have uh, before I connect with him, think about getting a cat communication session done with him. So I don't know if you've already had that, um, whether Pam's or one of her associates done anything like that with him. If, she, if they had a cat communication session, Pam? don't think so that would be my first instinct because when something is chronic and repeating you know if you've done kind of supplements and diet overhaul and that kind of thing you know the next stages are energetic and spiritual which is energy work which we're going to check in with him in a minute and then after that it's spiritual which is hearing what he has to say what is his soul trying to say to you so I remember doing a chakra cleanse with um Milo and he has a whole realm of issues and you know his story uh his feedback to his guardian was that you know I'm here to suffer so that you learn from my suffering that was a soul contract that they had and you know her world was rocked from that so I think it's important Natalie to consider having a cat communication session done because you may find other answers you know you've done obviously a lot with Pam and the kind of um conventional uh, medicine side and things aren't getting better, which in my opinion means you've got more to learn in the spiritual and, and, and energetic space. All right. So just have a think about that. So let me just give me a second and uh, we'll see what he's got to share. So the first thing he says to me is she's not listening. <laughs> Free to say that. <laughs> I I there is no filter. <laughs> there is no filter, right? I just share what they have to share. You know, sometimes it's emotional and upsetting. Sometimes it's stern and and potentially sharp to hear. So I'm really sorry, Natalie, but I am just going to give you what he gives to me, which is for you. And he's like, she's just not listening. It is he, he's he's frustrated. That's how his energy feels. It feels tense and tight and like like this. That's how it feels in his body. Like it's just all in there. And he it's like not anger, but it's this fine line between frustration, you know. And if you look at an emotional scale of vibration, you know, joy and love and gratitude are up here they're really high vibe really light um high frequency emotions and then down the bottom of the scale you've got you know um anger and frustration and irritability and depression and sadness you know and and they're not wrong 
they're not negative they're just denser so the vibration is heavy and and he's got a lot of the stuff at the bottom in his body and it feels really tight it feels really constrained and he almost feels choked by it did you just say to me about that regurgitation did you say oh, close my notes wait a minute regurgitation right that's why it's coming back up because it's the throat chakra. So here, <laughs> yeah, his throat chakra is like it's icky. It, it feels like treacle, like maple syrup, like really sticky, dense. The, the energy isn't moving. Now with the throat chakra, that's about expression. You know, energy moves through us. It comes from the root, you know, and it comes up all the way through the chakras and it usually comes out here, okay, which is the throat. So it comes down from the, the universe and, and creation, etc., out through the throat. That's how we express, okay? And for him, it's like the energy, yes, he is absorbing it, but it's getting stuck and it, it's it's all concentrated here. I feel like I want to kind of just like wipe this ickiness off off my skin. That's how heavy it feels for him. So if he's got that much of a blockage, that's why he can't, he's not, the food's not going down. The energy's not flowing through his body. It's not moving very well. Feels frustrated. There is... There is something between you and him, my love, that it, it, it's, he, he's like, she's just not getting it. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like I said, we do, uh, this ties in with what we said at the beginning about a cat communication session, you know, and again, hilariously, obviously we've talked about the throat, which is about communicating. So I would really encourage you to think about having a cat communication session with him because it, it, something is stuck here that he needs to communicate with you that you need to receive and I'll be honest I don't think it's the kind of thing that you want to do on a live you know we've, we only do this for a few minutes it's 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 deeper than that your connection with him is 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 more respected than that you know he needs time with you through a medium of me or or someone else to be able to express what's going on there is there is no expression of the situation so I would really recommend getting a cat communication session done hearing what he has to say and it will help to shift it that will shift his energy okay so it's not just about you know using color therapy or having a chakra cleanse with him it's more about expression he needs he needs to be heard and then it will shift okay how is there anything you want to add to that one if not crack on and do your next one Okay, that's awesome. Um, so can you hear me okay? Am I good? Okay. So my next little guy is going to be, hang on. Um, okay, so this next one is Curry. Curry. So look at this sweet baby. It must be black and white cat day. <laughs> so Jenny is joining us from Facebook I hope she's here can you check and see I haven't I can't do see both at the same time I don't see her she's not here no okay um yeah we can we can, we can move on, you know, because no, oh, she is here. Oh, she is. Okay. Okay. All right. So Jenny, thank you for being here. Sorry. I can't see. Thank you to my lovely Vanna White over here on the side. <laughs> okay. So Jenny submitted Curie and Curie is turning 14. He was diagnosed with like oral 
lesions. It's a very long, hard to say word uh, several years ago and has issues. He also has an abscess on his left shoulder and I think he finds it tender and uncomfortable. Is he okay? Is there something I can do to help him be more comfortable? Um, he's got a good appetite and he's he's been eating uh fresh raw food for three years now. So yeah, let's, let's figure it out. Um, this is, I had to go look up the actual name of the diagnosis F-O-R-L because I had never seen that before, but I do know what oral lesions are. So I'm just wondering, and of course, you know, in their, all their medical stuff, they say, we don't know what causes it. It's idiopathic. We don't, you know, we don't know how to fix it. We don't know what causes it, all this. So I'm thinking, hmm, no, you just don't know the right questions to ask. <laughs> that's that's my experience. So I want to find out, first of all, what is the root cause of his of the oral lesions? Um, does virus play a role. Okay. That's a yes. That's kind of what I was thinking. It was viral. So the root cause of the oral lesions in his mouth is it's resonating with some type of virus. Now I want to know which one, um, does this resonate with Kalichi virus? Yes. So I think what you're really looking at is systemically addressing the Kalichi virus. Um, it manifests its self in so many different ways. Um, the, the lesions in the mouth are just one way it can. I've seen it come up with ulcers and redness and similar to stomatitis and other cats as well. Um, so I would do some immune support for him. Vira X by Feline Essential. And I know the ladies are watching because I saw them pop up on here. So love to you guys. And I carry their products. They're awesome, but you can get some Vira X, put him on regular, like a maintenance program for, with Vira X just to help control viral flare-ups, keeping his body, you know, keeping his environment as stress-free as possible will go a long way as well. Um, love that he's doing the raw diet. Now let's look at the abscess. Um, does the liver need support here? So yes. So a lot of times now an abscess can be from a bite, a scratch, you know, it's just an infection under the skin. So I don't have much context of why or how that got there, but there are homeopathic remedies that we can use that are very cheap and so easy to use with cats that can clear up abscesses. We just need to figure out the exact match for that particular situation. Um, I'm also wondering, uh, okay, let me go back to liver support. Liver uh, with glutathione, he needs glutathione and that just kind of came out. Um, glutathione is a master antioxidant that will support his immune system as well as support the liver. And let's find out if... Would he need milk thistle in addition to glutathione? No, he just needs to be on some glutathione. And I do have some in my store. Uh, look under liver support. But yeah, glutathione for like one month, two months, three months, two months, two months. He he needs to be on some glutathione for two months. This will help balance his immune system. Um and strengthen his liver at the same time. So, and you know, things like medicinal mushrooms would be really helpful for a cat like him that has the immune issues and this is viral and the lesions and everything. I'm just seeing what else. Um, keep him on the raw diet. You're doing great with that. That's awesome. So, and then let's see if there was like a dental maybe a dental supplement just to help oral, you know, the oral microbiome, um, just support keeping the teeth clean and the tartar less. You've already got a great start with the raw diet. So that's awesome. If you don't see tartar as an issue, then that's great. But with the oral lesions, I almost want, I would almost put him on some type of an oral supplement and there are, there are all sorts of great things out there. Um, 
let me see, is one TDC. One TDC would be a one option. And uh, let's see what else would... Herb Smith has one called Cat Breath, and I have that in my shop. So something like that, just to help support, you know, oral health for him. Um, so that's my, that's kind of what I, I hope that helps. I mean, just finding the root cause of the whole immune issue is, is huge, but I'm really feeling like this is resonating with virus. If you can keep the virus flare ups down, support his immune system, support his liver, glutathione, mushrooms, Vira X, that's going to go a long way to help. So I will turn it back over to you. Lovely, thank you very much. Jenny said that she- just, to, just as an FYI. So um, uh, Pam's giving you some lovely um, lovely supplements. So reach out and, and um, get in touch. So I have got, who is my last one? Donna. Oh yeah, Donna with Serafina. Donna, where, where, let's see if you're here. What did I say before Facebook? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so Donna, let me know if you're here. If not, I'm going to put Leo up on screen. <laughs> okay. No, all right, let's see if anybody else is here. We've got. Um, Who else did we have? Let's see. Do we have Roz Coleman going to join us on Facebook? Roz, are you here? No. Hmm. Okay. So I've been, I've been, Leo has been nudging me the last few days to come online and do something live from him to everyone. And I've been absolutely petrified and I've not done it. And I'm surprised that I've not had uh, a situation where he's weed in the house yet, where he is pretty much sort of screaming at me to use his picture and do this and speak up and see what he has to say. So I'm going to give it one more minute and see if he, either Roz or um, Donna turn up. But if not, I am going to probably do Leo live and I am absolutely sweaty about it and nervous. Donna or Roz, are you here? Reach out, Pam, during the last bit of muscle testing. No, right, okay. Oh, I am so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. Oh, okay. Right. Find a picture of my boy. Oh, God, I am so nervous. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's my boy, for goodness sake. Okay, Pam, I was going to message you, but I'm like, here we go. I was just trying to, I was just checking it out and uh, I don't get the chance to do that now. So, Leo. Oh my God. Look at Pam laughing. I'm glad you're finding it funny. <laughs> oh God, right. All right, buddy. So I don't know how to talk about this, whether to do it as like the third person, that would probably make it a bit more comfortable for me, to be honest. And the first thing he says is, you did it, mum, you're really brave, which just makes me choked. You talk about giving people a voice and yet you won't let ours be heard. Your biggest teachers, and yet you keep us in the shadows.
we are here to tell the world just how important cats are. And you're the voice to do that for us. They need to hear our wisdom. They need to hear our voice. <laughs> it's not about you. <laughs> You're so blunt, I love it. Now is the time to speak. Now is the time for us to be heard. You can do this, mum. Okay, buddy. Enough of the messages. Do you have anything chakra-wise you want to share with me and with everybody that's watching me go to pot here? Not about the energy, mum, because that's where you're safe and comfortable. It's about you speaking my words and sharing with everyone what I have to say. You do this in the comfort of your home behind the screen and now it's time to speak up. Enough for now, but more to come. Thank you, sweet boy. Over to Pam. Okay, he's gonna make me cry. <laughs> what a sweet boy. Um, you need to have a little conversation with him next time prior and say don't embarrass your mama on live on live streams, please. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we're just a sobbing blubber blubbering mess over here. My <laughs> my last one is um parent is Brooke. Is Brooke here on Facebook? Because that's what I, I need to know if she's here. Um, I haven't seen, well. No, not yet. I can't see anything. Okay, we'll give it a second. Is Brooke here on Instagram? She said she was going to join on Facebook, but if not, we'll just, we'll just skip. Um, Maybe you should do one of yours. See, this, that seems to be the way we go tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> Actually, they're all, well, you know what? Um, Hershey and Spirit is around. I have not talked to him. I talked to Snow last night. Um, so I'm, sh yeah, I don't, I haven't had time to hear what Hershey has to say. Um, yeah, I don't even have. Oh, How do you feel? Do you feel you could show you up to doing it? I mean, if not, we could always put maybe Max up. Tie it to you. What do you feel comfortable with? <laughs> Don't be nervous. It'll be fine. No, it's not that I'm nervous. I just um I I can try. Yeah, hang on. I have to go find his picture. Because guess where it is? It's on the phone, which is being used for Instagram. So let me go pull up. Um hang on. That's okay. We're in no rush. <laughs> Let's see if I can find. Uh, where is his? Where are you? Where are you? Of course, you know, the time that you need to find your stuff, you can't find it when you need it. Okay. Okay. So, 
Diane says, uh, I have a question. My 10 year old seems more jumpy lately. I wonder why. That is a great question, Diane. I mean, who knows? <laughs> it could be one of many things. What I would say is, you know, uh, when there is a shift like this, first of all, well done. Well done for noticing it. It's really important to be aware of when something has changed. Then I would look at what's gone on in the house. You know, have you had changes to people coming and going? You know, Pam and I have beautiful gifts everybody has the capacity to find these frequencies to tune in and to use these sorts of skills that we're using tonight but I appreciate it's not for everyone you may not want to practice it and strengthen that muscle to get to the point where you can do what we do but what you can do as a cat mum cat dad pet parent whatever is look at what you can see so like Pam says I said before we look at the unseen we work with the unseen you know emotions energy mental health you know, you can see what's gone on. So have you changed anything in the home? You know, have you changed anything in the environment? Have you had people come to visit the house? Have you changed the food or the location of things? You know, if you move furniture around. So always have a look at the environment first and their their and their routine and see what has shifted. And if there's a capacity to make that you, you, you can see that you've made changes changes somewhere, then look to bring that back, you know, find a bit to regulate them. And if that doesn't, if that isn't what you think it is, then reach out and get help. You know, I mean, it would be, you know, you can always put them, them forward for energy insights. Pam and I do this every month. We've been talking about doing it twice a month. We're just trying to find a bit of um, balance with things at the moment. Everything seems to be a little um, upside down and a bit squirrely, but we definitely are going to be doing it every month, at least once a month, maybe sometimes twice. So there'll be chances for you to submit your cats. But as we've seen from tonight, we do ask that you show up to the live, you know, so that we've got the opportunity to converse with you and to give you a bit of extra support rather than just kind of putting it out to the ether without the guardians connecting with what we're saying. So Pam, you pause. You look like you've got a picture. Have you got one ready? Is Hershey here? Yeah. OK, brilliant. OK. All right, so this is Hershey. And it's already making me cry. <laughs> it's already one of those days. Okay. You've got, um, you've got this. Okay, he says, sorry. Um, he says, is this mom? Your heart is so huge. And you give so much to all your clients. Be sure to take some time for yourself. Because you can only give so much. And then it's then it works against you. So be sure to take care of you so that you can take care of others. She says you work too much. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Don't forget, we are here to support you and we're here to give you strength and inspire you. And you can always call on us for help. Let me see what else. I'm always right here in your heart. So that's what he says. And you are so, you are so brave. So, so brave. <laughs> oh, just slobbering mess today. Hey, right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. These pets, these cats, man. I know, right? They grab our hearts. They steal our hearts, you know, forever. 
You put a Make- caveat on the, uh, pare- you know, not parental advisory, but like, you know, emotional warning, uh, you know, teary episode. <laughs> <laughs> Get your Kleenex. Oh my gosh. It's just, yeah. These babies, they mean so much. They mean so much. And I think that that is one of the, the lessons that you and I are, we were aware of, but the more we work with our own, the more we are actually now vocalizing what is happening with them you know you put your blog out the other week about having them come to visit and what happens and when you see them in spirit with you and yeah you know, it's when we're giving them that voice that, that it seems like they're craving for uh, you know it is really impactful people have put in the comments that you know they're sending love and understanding that they've got uh, tears as well and you know it is it's emotional and I think that whenever we tear whenever we cry and shed a tear we are shifting emotion, you know, whether it's happy tears or sad tears, it doesn't matter whether it's sadness or pain, whatever. Tears represent emotion. And as we've already said before, emotion has to move. It has to move through. It has to shift. So, you know, it has, right. It's got to come out. We can't hold it. Absolutely not. That is when you get sick. That is when physical issues occur in the body, which we've seen from tonight with the cats, right? Yep. So I'm not going to talk to you more on this. I think Pam and I, I don't know about you actually, Pam, but I, I feel spent after this evening. It's been a wonderful session, but it has been very emotional and very um energetically, not draining, but energetically high. So, you know, it's taken yeah. a lot. Um, is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap up and I close the session, my love? I just thank you guys for hanging in there with us today. It's been one of those challenging days, but um thank you we send you all the love and we look forward to seeing you again next time and in our workshop join our animal guides and animal totems and spirit guides please join us it'll be fun lovely lovely thank you my love and i echo what pam said so it has been emotional and thank you to everyone who's been here with us tonight we've both shed tears I think we're both going to go and have a really good snotty cry when we come off camera uh, individually. Um, and uh, as, as Pam said, next Thursday, we've got our Animal Totems and Spirit Guides workshop. So you can register on, on my site or on Pam's um, next Thursday at half past seven UK and half past one central. Uh, an hour and a half is going to be a beautiful circle. I promise you there will be no crying from either of us. We will have a lot more composure. <laughs> Pam says maybe. Um, don't make promises you can't keep, Julianne. So on that note, everybody, thank you very much for being here. Energy Insights is back again next month. It's always the third Thursday. Let me just check the date. Thursday the 16th. So we will open registration. Keep an eye on your inboxes if you're up to if you're on our email list. And um uh you can register your cat for it next month. So thank you, everyone. It has been a real honor to be with you and to share messages from our fur babies and to give you messages from yours. So enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, and we will see you all soon. Lots of love, everyone. Bye for now.